Greg Fowler for Online London, and I'm with Paul Hubert, who is a candidate in Ward 8. Welcome. If elected, how many hours per week on average do you expect that you'll spend working in your elected capacity? Probably somewhere between 20 and 25. Do you think that ward councillors are currently paid enough for the amount of work that they'll be doing during the next term of city council? The next term of council will require more work from councillors as we have to cover all the boards and commissions. Um, as London knows, there's a citizen panel that's evaluating our pay scale, um, and so I'll be waiting their results. Um, but compared to other municipalities, uh, not only are we paid less, but we have less uh, resources to assist us in our work. London's governance model is undergoing significant change and you understand that that includes elimination of the Board of Control. Do you think that this will increase the necessity for ward councillors to inform themselves about issues outside of their own ward boundaries? Well, first of all, ward councillors had better be, in the past, educating themselves and informing themselves because at the end of the day, Board of Control was simply a committee uh, a finance committee that made recommendations to council and so every other week we would be, be making decisions on those issues however I think ward councillors are absolutely going to have a have to have a holistic citywide perspective do you live within the geographical boundaries of the electoral area in which you are contesting this election absolutely how many of your post teenage years have you lived in London how many of my post teenage years She's 16. Strengthening neighborhoods recommended development of a neighborhood matching fund type program for large and small community projects other than celebrations or events. Do you support that recommendation? I think that's a, a really good uh, suggestion. Yes, I do support it because it's not us just giving money, but it's a matching fund. So if the community raises $200, we might match that with $200. It's amazing uh, what uh, volunteer uh, sweat equity um, and passion can do with a small little bit of money to cover some of those costs. What maximum project amount do you think it would be appropriate for the city to contribute? Uh, given its community groups, I would say $500 initially. Do you support development of a community program to fund the creation of public art in public places? Well, let me put that into the context of, of our overall budget. I don't support us adding to our budget, but if we can find it within existing capital budgets, I think that's a good idea. Should the City of London and its boards and commissions embrace the concept of making their data open and accessible to everyone as often as is possible and adopting open standards for that data? Uh, I'm very supportive of the you know, open data um, project um, and I think it's a, a great opportunity for us also to leverage the resources in the community uh, as uh, some of the programmers develop local applications for that information. When existing software applications have to be replaced or software licenses have to be renewed, should the city adopt the use of open source software whenever that's possible? That's a little bit more complex in that I have to look at, we have to look at some of the security needs around some of the open source. If it's possible to do it and satisfy the security needs uh, that we have as a corporation, great. Uh, but I think that ha I would be looking for our chief technology officer to advise us on that. Is the city's communication department being given enough resources, money, and, and personnel to properly maintain the city website? and to inform citizens in a timely fashion. Our communications department's doing a good job, but I think we're caught between two worlds right now. I think we're trying to move and modernize in, into use of much more flexible technologies and reporting mechanisms. But anyone who uses the search functions on the city website finds them quite frustrating. Um, and, and part of that is that all documents are being scanned into a PDF. They're not being uh, categorized or labeled. So I think they're short uh, resources. Now every year at budget, uh, one member of council has tried to cut their budget. I will not support cutting the communications budget. 
Should citizens be able to subscribe to subject-specific RSS feeds from City Hall in order to stay informed? I'm not even sure we have, we're doing subject-specific RSS feeds right now. So if that was available, I don't see why not um, they could not be informed of that. Or at least be able to subscribe to it so that it could, you could get our RSS feeds on, say, community service type things or on um, engineering if you're interested in water, you know, whatever it happens to be environmental makes sense to me and it's not that hard to do it once you have the technology set up. Should citizens be able to download the agendas of upcoming public meetings, including advisory committee meetings at least a week in advance? Um, yeah, I absolutely, why not? Despite the requirement of the Municipal Act that all City Hall meetings be public, except for specific reasons, it's been argued that they most often are not because of the inability of the public to hear what's being said. Do you support the adoption of a policy which mandates the use of microphones in public meetings in City Hall? I have been supportive of people using the technology that we have, which hasn't been great. It should be better going forward so that, there, so that people can hear what is being said. And uh, for counselors to be faithful in turning the mic on and turning it off at appropriate times. Do you think the city ought to be webcasting all of its public meetings? I would like to see us move towards the webcasting, absolutely. Because quite frankly, let's say you're only interested in one particular item on a 50 item agenda. It seems absurd for you to try and protect, pre or predict when that item's going to come forward and, and perhaps you're not available to come to City Hall. So it would allow us to be far more open if I could um, click onto a, a, a podcast or a webcast of that and then fast forward to the particular item I'm interested in. Should the city's boards and commissions be webcasting all of their public meetings? Um, let's go to first things first and get City Hall online for committees, standing committees, First of all, standing committees and council meetings, and then we'll deal with boards and commissions. Should chairpersons of public meetings at City Hall have to announce motions and amendments to motions and the number of votes for and against those motions so that the public can understand what's taking place? Uh, the chair has a responsibility to make sure people know what's going on, but the chair is chairing the meeting. It's actually the clerk that needs to be doing that information so that people understand the amendment and they understand the result of the vote. Should London hire an Auditor General? I do not believe that we should hire an Auditor General at this time. We're in the process as Chair of Audit of outsourcing our internal audit which will give uh, Londoners all of the benefits of an Auditor General at half the cost. Should homeowners have to pay a percentage of the cost for the repair of damage to underground infrastructure on their own property that's been caused by city-owned trees? We have a long-standing policy on that in terms of private drain correct, uh, connections and uh, I think the policy right now is, is appropriate. It's, there's appropriate cross-sharing to it and there's mechanisms for it, and homeowners are not picking up 100% of the cost. Do you agree with the placemaking concept of neighborhood gateways? Yes. Should there be increased user representation on the London Transit Commission? No. If the City of London is going to provide venture capital to businesses, should the city be guaranteed a return on its investment in the event that those businesses become profitable? That's a difficult question and each business is different so it would depend on the amount of risk and the business plan in place. Should people be allowed to naturalize their lawns? Yes. Are London's pedestrians and pedestrian issues sufficiently represented in City Hall? No. And one of the things that I've encouraged for the first time in the history of the City of London is that the transportation master plan that's currently underway would integrate both roads, public transit, bicycles, and pedestrian use. 
The traffic and parking bylaw prohibits people from using any sidewalk for any purpose other than pedestrian traffic, except as specifically permitted. Should downtown patios, which consume most of the width of the public sidewalk, be permitted? Yes, within reason. When closure of a public sidewalk for construction purposes takes place, what steps should be required to ensure that pedestrians are not forced out onto the roadway in a matter which puts them at risk? Well, having participated in that and having observed it many times downtown, pedestrians uh, tend to try it. Uh, you know, when they say cross the road and use the other sidewalk, pedestrians make the choice to walk in the, in the traffic way, which I um, struggle to understand why they do that. So I think there has to be appropriate signage and an option for them to move to a safe way of passage. Is the warranted sidewalk program sufficiently funded? No. Is the warranted walkway program sufficiently funded? No. Old unlit streets are not lit unless there's a local improvement program application and a cost sharing agreement amongst owners. Do you agree with that policy? Yes. Do you think special funding ought to be provided to London Police for the purchase of additional Speedwatch radar trailers and the cost of having the auxiliary police section deploy them on a frequent basis? New idea for me, not sure what the costing is of it. Uh, obviously our police budget is significant, but I'd be very interested to look at that because I get consistent complaints about speeding in neighborhoods. Should the city be spending as much as it is per year from the federal gas tax to construct on-road bike lanes? Yes. Should bicycles be allowed on public sidewalks? No. Should persons in motorized wheelchairs and other mobility devices that are on the public sidewalk be obliged to yield for pedestrians? Yes. Should the city install more bike racks? Yes. Is theft of bikes an important issue? Certainly is if you rode there on it. <laughs> it's not there to get home. Oh my goodness, it's, you know, having had kids that have had bikes stolen, it, I, I, it's actually really devastating for a kid to have his bike stolen. It's kind of the, often it's their first encounter with a, a sense of violation, you know. Um, so, it, yeah, it's a, it's a big issue for someone who loses their bike. Do you have any suggestions about what could be done to combat that? You know, I, I, I know some cities have a sort of a, a licensing program where they actually etch it into the frame of the bike. And I think that that would help us in terms of retrieving some of those things. And knowing that it's there, almost like a chipping, if you will, uh, like we do a microchip your bike, like you do your dog, um, that might be helpful for us to track them. Is the city spending enough money to promote its web-based ride match service? Yes. Should there be dedicated and discounted carpool parking spaces on downtown streets and in city-owned lots? No. Should every signalized London intersection provide advanced left turns? It depends on the, on the volume of traffic and the directionality of the traffic. Does the city currently provide sufficient funding for the community gardens program? Uh, yes. Should all dogs have to be muzzled when they're not on their owner's property? No. Should dogs be allowed at community events? I wish people would use some discretion on that. I don't want to legislate that, but I think there's places where a dog's just inappropriate. Do you think people ought to be able to raise chickens in their backyards? No. That concludes the question and answers. Thanks for your cooperation. <laughs>